What's going on YouTube? This is ParkerLad88 coming at you with another video. Today I've got a little discussion video for you guys, and today we're going to be talking about the uh, the Moonlight monster, the Moonlight archetype. Um, I want to give you guys my opinions on this deck after having played with it for a little bit and kind of go over uh, the deck, what I think its strengths and weaknesses are, you know, so on and so forth. I'll get to the rest of that in time. Um, but okay, let's go ahead and get into... Well, I'm going to start by giving you guys my deck profile, just a, kind of a brief breeze over of um, my take on it so far. So the first thing we got is three of the wolves. Wolves, that is your miracle fusion. We have three of the tiger. Tiger is the one that lets you get the uh, moonlight monsters out of your graveyard. Ea, you get either via its uh, pendulum effect or via its monster effect. Pendulum effect once per turn, you can just grab them, or if this card is destroyed by uh, card effect or by battle, then you can grab any of your moonlight monsters from the graveyard that way. We have three sheep. Sheep either lets you get a polymerization from your deck or get a moonlight monster from your graveyard. These two are my favorites, and I think that they are the best of the Moonlights in the main deck. Next up, we have two White Rabbit. White Rabbit on Normal Summon lets you get a Moonlight monster from your graveyard in uh, defense position. Um, one thing I also wanted to mention is, via this thing's Pendulum Effect, if um, you get something like Blue Cat, for instance, off of this, and it dies during the end phase, you'll still get the effect, which I think is pretty cool. Anyway, um, we got two Purple Butterfly. used to only run this at one, but the more I play it, the more I like it. Being able to give your monster a thousand extra attacks to beat over a problem monster that might be walking you out or something like that, I think is really good. And banishing it to special summon this makes it easier as well to activate this thing's effect. And speaking of which, we have two copies of the cat. Cat, um, when special summon, it allows you to target one of your moonlight monsters and double its original attack. And then when it dies, it floats from death. We've got two copies of the bear, one copy of the gorilla, three polymerization, three tanky and one tensu. 3 Dark Eruption, 2 MSTs, 1 of the Fusion Tag, 1 Raigeki, 1 Foolish Burial, 1 Solemn, 1 Bottomless, 1 Vanities, 1 Torrent, 1 Moonlight Reincarnation Dance, 2 Notices. Moving into the extra deck, we've got 2 Leo Dancers, 2 Panther Dancers, 3 Cat Dancers, 1 Castell, 1 King Tiger, 1 Cowboy, 1 Abyss Dwelling, 1 Dark Rebellion, 1 Ragnar Zero, 1 Emerald, and one silent honor art. So a bunch of generic rank fours, um, one beast warrior specific one, which is really really good. And then we got the you know all the fusions currently. So what I want to do now is talk about the strengths and weaknesses of this deck. Um, starting with the strengths of this deck, um, the deck is very one dimensional. It's very linear, and what it does, but it does that very well. All these guys can attack multiple times, and as you upgrade into the next strongest one, you get more and more protection. This one says, can't be destroyed by battle. This one can't be destroyed by card effects. This one can't be targeted, or it cannot be uh, destroyed by card effects. Panther Dancer is probably my favorite, just because it's a nice middle ground between these two. It's not as easy to make as this. It's stronger than this, but it's not as strong as that. It's, I think it's a, it's a nice mix. Um, other things I think this deck does very, very well is allowing you to recur resources from your graveyard to use for your fusion plays. A number of these things say, hey, get stuff from the graveyard. This says, get stuff from the graveyard. This says, get stuff from your graveyard. This says, get stuff from your graveyard. Another good thing is that a number of these guys, their effects are not uh, once per turn. Um, so this thing's effect is not once per turn. So if you play two of these in the pendulum zones or whatever, you can actually get both their effects. Black Sheep being my favorite of the monsters, also not one per turn. And combos very well with Dark Eruption, because you can toss this for your polymerization or get back a monster, Dark Eruption it back into your hand, and then use its effect again. The only one that will make sure no, not even its ability to uh, be used as fusion material and getting stuff back that way is one per turn. So this is my favorite. Um, White Rabbit has really nice combos with Tensu. If you have multiple monsters in your graveyard, you can just bring this out. Uh, the attentive effect to get another one of the Moonlight monsters, and then you can just do it again with another one if you happen to uh, have it there. So those are probably the, the, the biggest strengths of the deck: the recursion and you know just its aggressive playstyle. Um, so probably the biggest player and weakness of this deck is the same thing as with other fusion decks: you can run out of resources very very quickly. 
This deck attempts to give you some ways to get the stuff back, but it's just not as good as starting off with the, uh, the hand advantage. And because you can't king of the swamp your way into these guys, it turns out it ends up making these guys much, much bigger investments than I feel they should be. Uh, at least currently, even though they do have their inherent protection, and having to run this card with it also kind of hurts as well. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Blue Cat currently. I hope that Red Fox has something extra to add to this deck, but outside of this, there's really nothing in this deck that I want to float into. This, you get off the effect from discarding from hand. This gets an effect off a of normal summon. It's cool, you can float into another one of these. Um, I don't want to float into this, because I'd rather discard this to my hand to buff the fusion. And, um, yeah, so... I feel like Cat is, is kind of weak uh, right now, but I will say that one thing that this deck does do very well is support its fusion. That being said, I don't feel like this deck has a lot of good standalone monsters, which is brings me to the, uh, the Fire Fist here. You know, Bear Pop is always going to be good, and Pendulums are kind of relevant, being able to destroy yours or your opponents with the, uh, the Fire Formation, stuff like that, so you can either get your fusions or whatever. It's really nice. And then being able to back that up with Tensu means you can clear, like, you know, problem cards off the board before you start going for your fusion plays, which I think is uh, really good. One thing I... Well, there are a couple things I think that would actually really, really help this deck out in the future, which I think... Um, which I hope that they get. Um, I mean, the deck kind of, I think, has the majority of its support here. I don't think it's going to be one of those sets that has support that lingers over. Um, I mean, Serena's Archetype is a show deck. And we might see maybe like one or two more cards, you know, in future sets, but in terms of like giant ways of support, that's that thing is going to happen. Uh, Red Fox is one, and then maybe they'll get like a couple other ones. Like, these are all based off of like colors and, and stuff like that, at least the non tangible ones. So maybe we'll get like a, like an orange something or a yellow something or like a green something, and you know, those will do things. But um, in terms of what I think that this deck needs in the future are a couple things. They need one, a way to get more hand advantage because this is a nice card and the fact that you can actually get this off of any of your monsters being destroyed is cool but because it's a trap it's inherently slow and you have to wait for something to happen in order for you to get that hand advantage um it needs that i feel like this deck needs more searchers and i also feel like this deck needs a built-in polymerization into one of its monsters it's nice that it has a built-in miracle fusion um but let's take a uh, fluffles for instance i think fluffles are a very good fusion archetype that aren't like Shadals or something like that for a number of reasons. One, they have a number of cards that say that allow you to search for things such as Edge of Chain, Dog, um, Owl, and a Toy Vendor. And they also have a way to uh, maintain hand advantage manage as well through the uh, through the Fluffle Wings uh, Toy Vendor loops that you can do. But it nets you like three cards so you'll always pretty much have a hand even if you go for fusion plays. And I feel like this deck really needs it because this deck cannot utilize King of the Swamp, and that deck can. Also, Fluffles aren't as uh, one-dimensional. They are just as aggressive as this deck, if not even more proficient at, you know, doing OTKs and whatnot. But um, with as linear as this deck is, and with how reliant it is on polymerization and the fact you can't use King of the Swamp, I really feel like this deck needs more ways in order to search things and get hand advantage. And I think once this deck gets those things, and another way to use outside of polymerization. Um, I mean, this being Mutual Fusion is nice, but they literally need something that has like a built-in Sonata or Al effect that allows you to fuse from hand or field. Not like Sonata, where you can only fuse from field. Fuse from hand or field, that's very, very important. I hate when Konami makes fusion cards that say you can only fuse from field. Super Poly is the only one that actually did that well. Um, the one for Buster Blade does it well too, but anyway. Um, there, there just needs to be more cards that actually act like polymerization that allows you to fuse from hand or field. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so, those are pretty much my stances on this deck right now. The deck is okay, it's got some, it's, it's got some really good strengths, it's got some very apparent weaknesses that come with, like, you know, an initial wave of support, but I do hope this deck gets better, because I think this deck is fun, I really like the way the cards are designed and everything. Um, but what do you guys think about this deck? Do you like this deck? Do you not like this deck? What do you think could make, uh, this deck better? Like, what do you want to see? I'd really love to hear what your guys' opinions are, and I'll be back to you later with future videos. This is Parkerlat, out.